Good morning, students. You are welcome to this uh, class. Uh, today, we shall be looking at national income accounting on the course Principles of Economics is in 102. I remain your course facilitator, Hassan Emmanuel. By the time we will be rounding up this class, you should, by a way of learning outcome, be able to define national income accounting. As first, secondly, be able to explain basic concept national income. Then three, be able to uh, explain the method of national income estimation. Four, be able to discuss the importance of national income accounting. Five, highlight the challenge of national income accounting. And lastly, discuss circular flow of uh, income. By way of definition, we shall start to look at what national income is. National income, uh, simply defined, is the monetary value flow of outputs of goods and services produced within an economy over a period of time, usually one year. Usually, national income accounting records the degree of gains in accounts, such as amount of taxes paid by individuals and corporations in an economy, wages paid to domestic and foreign workers, and income earned by individuals and organizations within the economy. So that simply gives us the definition of national income. Some concepts that will be very relevant for us to look at in this uh, course include the stock and flow variables. Two, we have gross domestic product, the concept, concept that we should, uh, some concept that we like to look at here include uh, the stock, the stock and flow variables. I'm coming just first up. So some concepts that uh, we would like to look under this include uh, that's the concept in national income. One. Where why is it? Where N why N is national and why is equals to income income so this concept include one we can have the stock stock and uh, flow flow variables two gross domestic gdp gdp here means gross domestic product please gdp gross domestic product three we have uh, the nominal GDP. Four, we have the real, real GDP. Five, we have the uh, value added. Value added. Six. We have the, I'll I, I just give some, not all, market price. Seven, we can have the gross national product, GNP, which means gross national product. We can also have eight, personal income. Personal income. Then nine, we have transfer, transfer income. Then uh, ten, we have uh, per capital, per capital. Income eleven. We have the net national income. So these are some of those concepts uh, that we will encounter on the national income. To start with, what is uh, let's look at GDP. GDP 
still remains for us. God's domestic product is the total monetary value of all goods and services produced within the boundaries of a country at a given time. It includes all domestic goods produced, whether by foreigners in the country or by natives of that uh, country. So GDP, uh, 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 that's what GDP stands for. Then we also have the net, the nominal GDP. The nominal GDP is the monetary value of total goods and services made in an accounting period, valued at the market price at that period. So the market price now comes in here. You have to value the goods at the market price at that particular period that we are looking at. Then we have the real GDP. The real GDP uh, is determines it is determined through the value of total goods and services at constant prices. It shows the price change in goods and services produced. Unlike nominal GDP, uh, this real uh, real growth domestic product shows the uh, changes in the goods and services produced by way of uh, changes uh, that have taken place in prices. So these are some of them. Also, also are the value added, another concept under uh, uh, the concept of national income. Value added here, this refers to the extra cost that a company or a producer acquires on a product in the course of its production. For example, a chocolate factory uh, bought the raw material for their production at 5 million naira. After production, they sold their entire chocolate for 8 million naira. The value added is the 3 million naira upon the cost of the raw material. So then we have market price. So, of course, market price here is the uh, market price here is the price at which a good is picked out of the market. The price at which a good or a service is uh, uh, bought uh, from the market. Then we have the gross national product. It's another one, gross national product, GNP. The gross national product here has to do with the monetary value of all the goods and services produced by the nationals of a country, whether currently residing in they are countries of origin or anywhere in the world. So, gross national product has to do with a particular national of a country, like all Nigeria, whether they are living in America or UK or China, Nigeria, but there's a way all their income or, uh, yes, their income can be you know, pulled together and uh, added up to arrive at the gross national product for Nigeria. Then we have personal income. Of course, personal income has to do with the uh, a income earned by persons, individuals. This has to do with current income of household or persons from all sources, which include receipts such as transfer payment from which no productive service are produced by the recipient. So the personal income uh, has to do with income earned by household. Then transfer income. Transfer income, of course, are uh, income or this is the money given by the government to a citizen. Example includes social security, unemployment compensation, and other welfare uh, uh, provisions by the government. To, so that, that is transfer income. Then per capita income. Per capita income is arrived at by the per capita PCI. It's arrived at by determining, by the, uh, dividing your total national income by a national income NY over the population. National income NY over population. Where our NI, NY is equal to national national income and our population POP is equal to population. Population. So that is par per capita income. Then we have the net national product, the net national income or net national product. The net national uh, product is defined as the gross national product 
our net national product is equals to gross national product gross national product minus depreciation depreciation so that is uh, the net national so these are some of those concepts it's important for you to know that all this concept can be studied in your uh, can be found actually in your uh, material or other relevant tests so consult your material and you see all this concept there uh, further explained for you so the next we shall be looking at are the method of national income accounting the methods of national income accounting methods of national income so we have them here the method of national income accounting there are three of them we have the output method the expenditure method and then we have the income method method of national income uh, accounting the first time the first one the expenditure method the expenditure method uh, is arrived at by adding uh, y by that is our y is equals to y is equal to c plus i plus g y equal to c plus i plus g where c is aggregate consumption expenditure i is aggregate investment g is government uh, expenditure so the national income at that level uh, using the expenditure method is arrived by using this uh, equation this first equation gives us for a closed economy called maybe closed economy a closed economy a closed economy while if you are having uh, an open economy the, your national income or the national income using the expenditure method becomes y equal to c plus i plus g minus plus xm minus im so where xm here is our export and our im is import so if we go through this uh uh no uh, simple arithmetic of adding all consumption expenditure, investment expenditure, aggregate investment expenditure, and aggregate consumption expenditure, and government expenditure will be arriving at uh, the national income using the expenditure method. Then the income approach. The income approach. The national income using the income approach is arrived at by adding all rewards which accrue to factors of production. By adding all rewards which accrue to factors of production within a year. So this reward includes rent. Rent is earned by land. Wages earned by labor. Capital earned interest. Entrepreneur earned profit. So our national income, following the income approach, therefore becomes Y is equals to R, which is rent, plus wages, W, plus interest, I, plus profit, pi. So C material, for example, C material, for example, uh, that's on page 24, on your uh, material on page 24, you can uh, see a simple example. For, anyway, let's look at this uh, simple. Uh, now, let's look at the next one, which is the output approach. This is one I have as my uh, number one on the list here, output approach. I have a little example uh, for output approach below here. That is following the output approach. Now, on the study guide, in your study guide, there is an example there to calculate GDP using product, production method or output method, income method, and expenditure method. From that example, we have uh, UAC PLC, UAC PLC, 
and we have Mr. Biggs. We see there that uh, UAC PLC paid wages to UAC employee, paid wages of 15,000 to UAC employees, paid taxes to government. If you check your page 23 on your study material, you see this. Uh, we also see UAC PLC sold gala to public for 10,000. Revenue received from sales of gala, 35,000. Uh, that is for UAC. Mr. Biggs also paid wages to Mr. Biggs employees of 10,000. Uh, taxes to government of 2,000. Satis bread purchased from UAC, 25,000. The revenue received from sales of Satis bread, 40,000. Now, if we want to calculate the, uh, from this example, to calculate the national income using the income approach, we we'll have wages here plus profit plus taxes. Now, if you start from that of UAC, UAC paid wages of 15,000. So we have 15 here. Then, uh, we have another 10,000 here. If you follow the wages, uh, then uh, Mr. Biggs paid wages of 10,000. This is this 10,000. So we have 15 plus 10. This is all the two wages paid by both Mr. Biggs and UEC. Then we come to uh, the next thing. We have 15,000 here. 15,000. This 15,000 is the profit earned by UEC. UEC earned a profit. UAC UAC profit is arrived at by that 15,000 here is arrived at by subtracting the 35,000 this is 35,000 will remove uh, the wages paid, wages of 15,000, and also tax of uh, 5,000. They pay the tax of 5,000. 5,000. If you do this, this will give you 35,000 minus. Uh, 20,000, which is equals to 15,000. 15, so this is how we arrive at this 15,000 here. For profit, that is for uh, UEC. Then, the same, this 3,000 here is arrived at profit for Mr. Biggs. Mr. Biggs profit, Mr. Biggs. Profit will be equals to 40,000. If you go down the, the question, revenue end from sale of Satis, 40,000. 40,000 minus uh, Mr. Biggs pays on wages, wages of 10,000 by Mr. Biggs, wages of 10,000. Also, Mr. Pick also uh, paid taxes of 2,000. Taxes of 2000 and then Mr. Biggs also Satis Blair purchase from UAC, purchase of raw material of uh, from UAC worth uh, 25,000. So if we add all this together, the amount to 40,000 minus 10 plus uh, 25 is uh, uh, 35 plus 2 is 37. So you have 37,000. So the profit for Mr. Beast is uh, 3,000. That is how we arrive at this 3,000 you are seeing here. So very important, this is how we arrive at this 3,000. Then the next 5,000, the next component is taxes. Mr. B paid a taxes of uh, a tax of five thousand 
which is here. So that's the tax. Then also, uh, you know, UAC pay tax of 5,000, Mr. B pay tax of 2,000. Mr. B pay tax of 2,000. So you can see that here as a uh, so if you add that together, that if you add all this together, that gives us fifty thousand. That gives us fifty thousand. So this fifty thousand is the national income using the income approach. National income using the income approach. Very very important. So these are the three methods uh, that you can use actually to arrive at a national income estimate for an uh, economy. So by now you should to simply go through and actually arrive at an uh, estimate of national income for, uh, for a country. Now the next thing we shall be looking at as we proceed on this uh, class uh, is the importance of national income accounting to an economy, the importance of national income accounting. Importance of uh, national income. One, it is very important uh, in measuring the level of productivity uh, of a country. So, important, useful for useful for measuring them is that I did uh, useful for measuring it's useful for measuring productivity. whether for a sector or for the whole economy. So in doing that, so secondly, uh, it's also very important for measuring standard of living. Standard of living. So of course, the higher the national income estimate or figure for a country, all things being equal, if the population of the country is kept at being kept uh, within a uh, reasonable bound, then the standard of living or who is intended to be rising. If people are engaged in, are engaged in production activities and then and all the sort. So it's very important in measuring standards. Also very important for planning. Three, planning. For planning. And policy. Planning and policy. Then also is also important for uh, measuring a cap per capita income, per capita income, per capita income. Earlier on, we explained what per capita income is. Then it's also very useful for uh, forecast to forecast the economy. Forecast. The economy very important to forecast the economy. No, we can also use it. It's very important also for foreign investors. Foreign investors will look at uh, how well a country is doing by way of the size of the economy, size of the national income. So foreign investors, foreign investors can use. Our national income figure to decide whether to bring in their investment or not. So these are some of the uses of national income uh, accounting. Next, what I'm looking at is the uh, challenges. What challenges? Challenges. Challenges of uh, national income estimation 
challenges. So these challenges are, are as follows. First, we have the issue of uh, exclusion of illegal incomes. Illegal incomes. One, illegal incomes. Illegal income actually are excluded because you can hardly capture them. You can hardly capture them. So they are in most cases excluded. And of course, these incomes that are earned by illegal activities are used in all kind of approaching activity, used in building, buying all kind of things. No, but then you can hardly be able to capture uh, this kind of uh, income that are earned illegally uh, within the economy. Then the issue of data, issue of data, the accuracy of data, accuracy of gathering data on all production activity within the economy can also be uh, an inhibiting factor which can actually pose challenge for the Then three, three, we have also the issue of uh, double counting. Double counting. Double counting. Double counting. We explained that during, if you're using the uh, output approach, in order to escape double counting, we must always make sure that we are add, we are counting the value added at each stage of production. So, if for instance uh, a, a, a a bakery or a bread a bread maker, put them baker bread maker. No, if you want to make it, they must have bought uh, flour. So the first stage, for example, you have flour, then the flour is converted into bread, into bread, flour F converted into bread. So if you bought a flour, maybe let's say uh, flour is bought at uh, a given price of maybe say uh, 1,000 naira, and then it's taken to you for, for bread, and then from that 1,000 naira flour, we're able to make maybe 2,500 worth of uh, bread. So what the baker has added here is uh, 1,500. That's the value that the baker added. 1,500. The baker added the value of 1,500. So the baker added the value of 1,500. 1,500. That was the baker added as the value. So you cannot say it's 2,005 that the baker added. So that would be double, count, double counting. So at the beginning, the farmer or whatever, whatever they want, this is primary input, 1,000. And then, the, uh, so in, in the chain, what we have altogether is 1,000 plus 1,005, which is 2,005. All the chain, everything added. So double counting is also a problem uh, that can actually serve that to underestimate or, or overestimate the national income. Then we have an uh, issue of uh, price level changes. Four price level changes. Price level changes. Of course, the prices are not really uh, uh, no stable in most economies. So once the price level changes, then the value that you are going to uh, uh, actually arrive at, I can talk about real or nominal GDP, is going to be changing as the price level uh, is changing. These are some of the challenges that uh, actually confront the estimation of uh, national income. So please do look at your study material, your study guide. You have uh, these uh, uh, items here for you to go through and to have better understanding. So lastly, we shall look at the circular flow of income. Circular flow. 
of income. Circular flow of income. So the circular flow of income uh, is a model of an economy. It's a model of an economy in which the, the main exchange are shown as flow of money, goods, and services between economic agents like buyers and sellers. In national income accounting, outputs and expenditure are generated by the activities of two most vital parts of an economy. And these two vital parts of the economy are the household, the household, the household, household, and uh, to the firms. The firms. So we'll be looking at how these two uh, sectors or agents in the economy actually interact. How these two interact. Uh, that give us an, uh, an understanding of the working of the circular flow model. Now, the household. The household is the primary, the primary economic function of the household is to supply domestic firm with needed factors of production. So, household, the household supply, the supply factor of production. Factor what are called factor service. The household supplies factor services to the firm. The household supplies factor services to the firm. And this includes the land, human capital, real capital, and enterprise. So the household supplies its labor to the firm to be used in production. While the firm you know, gather all the factor services plus raw material, produce goods, and sell back to the household. So the firm is a unit of uh, production. Unit of production. <laughs> So production takes place in the firm while the household supplies the factor services needed for production. Why the household supply factor services needed for production? Those are theater. So, as uh, so we're looking at uh, the circular flow of income, I say the household supply factors of production, factor services, while the firm actually uh, is the unit of uh, production. So we want to look at how these factor services move from the house of the firm in exchange for factor income and how goods and services move from uh, uh, our goods, particularly produce goods, move from uh, the firm to the household in exchange for uh, money uh, or money prices paid on such uh, goods uh, produced by the firm. So let's look at uh, the simple flow uh, between the two units in the economy. So if you have the household, I have the uh, H, 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 H slash H here to represent household. 
Then I'll use F here to represent FEM. FEM. So we have from household to FEM, factor service is moving. And in exchange for that factor service, okay, here we have factor service. Factor service or services. Then exchange, we have factor income. You can see that arrow, factor income. Factor income, move back to the household. So the household gives the services or other services to the firm to produce and they pay their income back. But the firm also, firm send goods and services. So the arrow move from the firm to the we have goods. But we have goods and just to the add goods. Goes of them. If household also pay for that goods, uh, payments for goods and services, payments, payment for goods. So by so doing, the economy is kept, is kept at equilibrium. If this happens, if all the income earned by the household is used for uh, paying for goods and services, if the household earns income. If that income is all spent in buying goods and services, then this, the circle is kept flowing. It's kept flowing. If there's no any leakage of the system, then we say the uh, that's equilibrium will, uh, will be kept uh, uh, within. But once what normally happens is that if one has once there's a leakage out of this system, a leakage by way of savings, if the household feel like saving some part of its income, there's a leakage out of the system. Then that leakage will also for, force the, uh, it means that there will be distribution of the system. So the firm, to balance that one, the firm has to also uh, do some kind of inventory uh, investment. That will be investment. But we are uh, keeping some inventory in store. So for a people to exist, this S savings must be equals to I. Savings must be equals to I. So it's actually if at your level now, we not go beyond this for now. This is just that you have the two uh, uh, sectors within the economy, the household and the firm. I said earlier on, the firm is the production unit, unit of production, while the household uh, is the one that owns the, own the factors of production. The labor services are owned by the household, the land is owned by the household. So there is this exchange which takes between the two sectors of the economy. Uh, and that is what we refer to as the circular flow. This is a simple two sector model. It's simple to set up the two sector model of the household and the firm. I will uh, I will uh, be running up this class uh, accordingly. So this morning we will be able to look at uh, the study session on national income accounting. And by way of reflection, we looked at the definition of national income. We explained some basic concepts of national income accounting. We also explained the methods of national income estimation. We explained the importance of national income uh, estimation. We also highlighted the challenges that are in uh, actually arriving at national income estimate for uh, an economy. And lastly, we look at uh, the, the circular flow of our uh, income. So thank you for listening. I'll be pasting an assignment on the LMS. LMS, be watch out on LMS for an assignment on this uh, uh, on this uh, course. Also, make good use of your study guide. They are with you. Read through. There are references uh, actually. Uh, uh, in that material, convert the references and then enhance your knowledge in this uh, area. Thank you very much for listening and God bless. Thank you.